YouTube, what's up guys? I want to bring you guys a tip here that can really kind of take your game to the next level uh, and really show you guys why some of us pros or some of the elite Madden players that you guys watch not only on YouTube but on Twitch uh, really use this swerve catching and use this tactic to kind of make their offense a little bit more high powered and have more control over the players. That's one of the biggest uh, complaints that we've had about Madden in the last couple of years is that it's very animation based there's not a lot of user skill to it. And honestly, this is one of the best things that, you know, kind of separates a really good player from just an average to above average player. And that's being able to use the swerve catch. And, and, and before we start this, I mean, it's pretty much just about dictating what animation you want. When the ball is in the air, you have the ability to get a better animation for your wide receiver. You know, so much of the game, whether you play 2K, whether you play wh whatever it may be, sports games more than any other game out there is animation based, which means, you know, whichever player gets the better animation, if your wide receiver gets the diving catch, if your wide receiver gets a certain toe tap, if he can get enough space to get a rack ag, ag animation, which people call uh, the rack ag is a, a rack aggressive catch. It's not necessarily an aggressive catch from Madden 17, but it's one where you get put in a two-player animation where the defender can't do anything because he gets put in that animation. That's what I mean about the game being very, very animation-based. And what Swerve Catching does for you guys pretty much dictates what animation you're going to get. And, and for me, there's pretty much two, two of the easiest ways to use this uh, is really... Either with a rack egg or a possession catch. I'll be honest with you. The only time I really use aggressive catch, the Y button this year, is if I throw a bad read into coverage and just want to try to get a two-man breakup and not throw an interception. So most of the two two catch buttons we're going to use for swerve catching is pretty much just going to be X for a rack uh, to run after the catch or we're going to get a possession catch where we get a toe tap or we'll catch it in front of a player. Um, but I'll, I'll break down the two different ways that I really like to use this swerve catching and really can bring your take your offense to the next level. All right, guys, the first catch we're going to talk about is the deep post, a deep rack, something like that. And, and, and the biggest thing uh, with this is you want to change the direction that Tyreek Hill is running when he's going to catch the ball. Most of the time, it's a cover three bomb. And if you're, you're doing this and you hold X, you'll run out of space on the sideline there. Or you'll have to possession catch it just to keep your feet in. And with the, one of the ways we use um, the rack or, or the swerve is to just position Tyreek Hill, get his shoulders going towards the end zone. So we'll click on here, we'll hold X, ah, and kind of just swerve, go to the sideline, then up the field to kind of get his shoulders square with the end zone. Because if his shoulders are square with the end zone, when he actually does get this rack egg, the last second just put him underneath to the left a little bit, then right up field, right as you hold X to catch the football. It just changes his angle from where he catches the ball and, and just allows that rack animation to actually get him going into the end zone. As you saw, I did it so much there that I, I really was not even near the circle, but he reached his arms out as we watch this replay. He reached his arms out uh, to catch the ball, and that kept his shoulders, as we see... <clears throat> we click on there and then go back upfield just to get his shoulders going the right way. See, right there is all you need to see. You see his shoulders going towards the sideline. You click on him a little bit up the field. Now, the animation is a little bit different. That's what I mean about the swerve catch dictates animations, changes what they can do to catch the ball. Bang, now I'm going upfield. It's a lot easier to keep my feet in and be able to run in for the end zone. That's one of the ways I love to use the deep post play or the rack catch on the deep post play just to make sure I score touchdowns because even though that's a big play, he's probably going to be open if you have the possession catch that. If you get it to the 10-yard line, that's the hardest place to score. I'll show you another one that, that we use or I use. Say, say we run out here and we're in traffic, but oh, they leave Tyreek Hill wide open. And I, uh, God damn it. I want to show you guys is if I right, say I throw the same deep post, man. But we're just going to throw so Mahomes really just doesn't get enough on it, right? But we're going to slow my player down and come back to the ball and get it. Because if I would have just... This is if he's wide open. Obviously, if there's a DB, he's not going to be around there. But if he's wide open, you get a pass kind of underthrown. Although it's hard for Mahomes to underthrow. As you see, he's like ridiculous. Even that one. 
but you still want your receiver catching the ball with momentum. If you let the receiver stop, he's not going to score a touchdown. He's going to let DBs catch up to him. He's going to get tackled. He's going to get hit sticked. Like there. You want him to catch it on momentum or with momentum so he runs into the end zone. And it's kind of crazy. That really wasn't even a swerve. You almost want to pull him away from the circle and then let him catch it pretty much in stride. And it's just a timing thing, almost like catching a punt or catching a kickoff. It's just something you need to practice. And this is one thing that people don't utilize enough is practice mode uh, offense only. As you see, I throw him the ball now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move him back. This, the circle's probably around where the 20-yard line is. Move him back, almost strafe him out of the play. And then when it's timing, when it's time to get the football, we'll run back to the circle and hold X. That way, you see how he catches the ball. Had I had he been wide open and I threw him the ball right now, he would have just stood there and caught it and been able to get, get tackled. But if you click on, back him up, and then attack the ball with momentum, you'll be able to score a lot more touchdowns. On underdog passes, recognizing something deep down the field is just a great way to give your wide receiver the right momentum. Another way I love to use the swerve catch, man, is possession catches on the sideline. Uh, you know, I mean, you guys have been playing Madden for how many months? For six, seven months now. Uh, the sideline is tough to get stops. If you can get catches on the sideline, I mean, you're going to get that animation and they're not going to be able to hit the wide receiver. They're not going to be able to knock the ball loose as long as you get your toe tap animation. And we're going to use this play Y out, which is five, probably my favorite play in Madden the last three years. Uh, and, and I'm just show you guys what the difference is sometimes with some of these animations. Essentially, what with a, a with a possession catch animation, what you want is you want your receiver going as sideways as I want to say as perpendicular to the to the sideline as pop as possible. Because then he'll he'll literally his body won't lunge towards defenders; it will lunge out of bounds, and it's impossible to hit a receiver unless they're lunging directly at you. So essentially, what we want to do is is we want to click on and kind of. Just how I wanted my shoulders squared up to the end zone for the touchdown, I want my shoulders squared up to the sideline. Because if I can attack that sideline perpendicularly, I mean, I guess, yeah, I said that right. Then I'm going to, although it's almost like an out route. Like if I throw this and don't click on, he's going to catch it maybe on a 45 degree angle. And then maybe a, a safety will be able to hit him. A safety will be able to come back and make a play. But if you're able to, you know, just twist your shoulders that much more, it's going to change the, the animation. As I show you guys, let's just see exactly where I caught that ball to. What yard line? See if it's that big of a difference. We start over here probably at the 32-yard line, and we caught this ball essentially at, what is this, the fifth or the fourth? Oh, Jesus. The opponent's 43. Now, let's just throw it. We'll pass lead, and we'll just let the computer possession catch. A uh, similar spot, really. I think, but I I feel like it's not as clean as as an animation. The other one was at like the forty three, yeah, same spot. But I just don't think it's as clean as an animation as the one I got. He's not lunging out of bounds. He's probably still standing there. Although it'd also be tough to hit that animation. I always like the animations where I'm falling out of bounds. My toes are tapped and I'm falling out of bounds. That's what I mean about dictating the animations and, and why we use this catch, man. And like I said, it's something you really got to practice. As you see, as soon as I throw the ball, I'm clicking on. So it's a Y, B. Now I'm going to get my angle. I'm going to attack upfield and be able to kind of almost like a comeback route. Go back and they tell the football players, man, attack the football. That's what you're going to do now. Attack it. And you're almost catching this like an, you, you run like a mini out route at the top of your corner route. Able to get that animation, boom, right down out of bounds. You're not knocking that ball loose. And, and that's just a great way you're able to, you know, use your stick work to make sure your receiver gets the animation that you want. The last way I'll show you guys really to use this catch is essentially uh, the wheel route and verticals. This is where it kind of started this year to get a little boost. When you throw this wheel route uh, to Tyreek Hill here and just be able to run a little bit more. And just get the right angle. And essentially, if there's cover two, I'll show you guys. If it's cover two, you want to be running away from the safety. So the safety is in the middle of the field. 
So I'll show. I will just. It, we'll just act like there's going to be a safety kind, a cover two safety, which obviously this is the best play for that. You want to come inside and then catch it running outside. You see, because then it goes essentially just to what I talked about with the shoulders. If you catch the ball going a certain way, you'll get that momentum. And, and in this instance, we'll do it essentially like like there's a safety there that we have to run away from. We'll cut in and cut back out. And look at where my momentum's taking me, to the sideline, essentially away from where the safety would be, maybe the 20-yard line or something. And we'll use Tyrese Hill's speed to outflank him to the corner of the end zone. You know? When I when I do the ball, he was here. Now they use this red line. You guys think this red what's this red line? They really use this red line in real football practices so wide receivers don't go outside of this red line. Because what you want in real football is this red line is when you're running a vertical route, is you want space to the sideline for the quarterback to throw the ball on the sideline and you be able to like box out the defender. And that's essentially what we're doing here. Except, you know, we'll box out, we'll create that space. You know, we just swerved back inside to create, you know, what's that, 10 yards or 8 yards from me to the sideline and then eat up that space by going back and catching the ball with momentum towards the sideline to outflank the safety. So that's just using the stick control and using, you know, just leverage and just space on the field to do that. Now, the other way we can do this on a wheel route is we can lead it outside and essentially do what I said with the possession catch. This is the number one thing uh, with possession catch where you notice a difference. That time I swerved, like it's pretty much the same thing, but I got that shoulder perpendicular to the line of scrimmage to get, you know, the right possession catch that I wanted. That one wasn't as good. Now we'll keep doing this. I'm motion out. I really didn't have the space to really do what I wanted there. That's why, you know, I didn't motion them out the first time. That one was almost super drastic. Uh, came back inside and got the possession catch. Because I'll show you guys, if you throw this, you know, and just go for a possession catch, you know, that that's going to get Tyreek Hill hurt. You know, he's going to get hurt in your CFM. He's going to get hurt in your regular game against Larry down the street. He's going to get hurt, you know. And that, those f head up straight to the end zone possession catches, pretty much I want to tell you guys are like the only one like that can get hit, can get absolutely hit sticked. There's such a huge difference. I'll show you that replay of that animation compared to the one where I clicked on and actually tried to get him to fall out of bounds. Just I didn't click on it all here. I just held A and he's straight up and down. And whatever safety you guys play with on Mutt, on Regs, anybody's gonna clobber him and he's gonna drop that pass. I just like it's just the biggest difference in animations and and it's something that you can control. And that's why we all try to do it, you know, in certain, uh, I, you know, we call it an out route here. But the same thing, really. You can really pretty much do the same thing on any route. It just takes a lot of practice. But I'll throw this wheel route again. Pass lead to the right. Click on, go right, come back, get that knee in bounds, out of bounds. He's not getting hit sticked on that one. There's no chance of him getting hit sticked when you're able to do this swerve catch and, and get the right animation that you want. Uh, I overdo. I lobbed that one by accident. But if you're able to get this animation that you want, you're able to get way more yards as we throw the ball to Watkins. You're able to get way more yards and, and avoid those hits that will make a receiver. And I throw to Watkins again. And will make uh, your receiver not get his stick and, and pick up these big plays. Here we go. Pass lead outside. We're going to go in left. Back out right, toe tap out of bounds. Huge difference, just just a little bit like that, to be able to uh, get that forty yard gain and not have the Sean Taylors, the Pat Tillmans, and everybody else knocking your face off. So those are the ways that I really like to use the swerve catch. Man, like I said, this is probably underutilized. I want to know if you guys ever use uh, offense only. I think it's it's a super uh, underutilized aspect of Madden. It's something that uh, back in Madden 08, Madden 09, when I first started really becoming competitive in Madden, uh, it's something I use a lot to learn different rocket catches, learn different pass leads, learn what I could do with my players. Now it's more of a running with the ball, uh, stopping goals, spin moves, whatever you want to do without having to worry about getting block shedded, without having to worry about defense. Just go practice some things. 
Get your stick work down. A lot of this stuff is timing. Once it becomes second nature, it becomes timing to you, and you don't even really have to look at the screen, and you're just doing it naturally. It's not something you have to try. It just happens every single play. So try to add this to your game. If you're not doing it, I mean, it's something that can really improve your offense, man, and help you get those tough catches over the middle, those tough catches on the sideline, those tough catches that are those bombs that, that would be you know stopped at the eight-yard line. Now you're scoring touchdowns on those plays. Uh, and it's just really a way to open up your big plays down the field for your offense. So please hit that like button. If you like more videos like this, little little tips and tricks, show you guys, please let me know below, man. I'm trying to come up with some new content for you guys that's original and that you guys can enjoy to become better man players because I feel like the better you get it, man, the more you'll enjoy it. And I hope all you guys can one day enjoy it as much as I do.